Tonight's webinar is Mathematical Methods and Specialist Maths with the TI Inspire Non-CAS Technology. Um, I am your host for this event. Um, my name is John Bayment, and I teach mathematics to Year 7 to 12 students at a Lachlan Catholic College here in Darwin, where I use TI technology to help students make stronger connections, as I did today with both my Year 11 and 12 classes, in their understanding of mathematics. And there is the lovely Rodney Anderson himself. Uh, as you can see, Rodney has followed the TI journey since its inception, or TI-81, through to its current TI Inspire and the new TI Inspire as well. Uh, this gives him a depth of knowledge and practical experience, which he is always willing to share, as I know, and especially with his colleagues. So through his web website and presenting at various conferences, both in Australia and overseas. So, Rodney, thank you very much for joining us this evening, and um, looking forward to you, as always, sharing some of um, the uh, bounty of knowledge that you have about the Inspire, and also the way that you use that with your students in your classroom. So thank you. All over to you. Thank you, John, and good evening all. So I'm just sharing the screen there. So it'll be a mixture tonight, as you saw, with we've got a short amount of time, and then Melissa will do with the handheld as well as spend time on the um, the emulator here. So as I said, with her, she's doing a few things, but the students install the software. First thing I say to my students is just grab the blue bar to the side here and make it a little bit bigger so it fits the screen. And we've got it maximised and we're ready to go. So as with the students get the layout of the calculator, the first thing I often say to them, just look at the calculator for the moment. The important keypads to press, and I'll use the terminology, obviously the control keypad, the tab like a computer. It goes from field to field when you press tab. The scratch pad, we'll look at that a little bit later on. The escape keypad, the home. If you're ever in trouble, you want to go home, you press home. Document keypad, the menu keypad, this is the nav pad, or people say it's the mouse, and we have the shift, and we have all the other buttons through here as well. So actually, when the students get their calculator for the first time, they turn the calculator on, and we have the home screen. Now, with the home screen, you'll see we've got the scratch pad on the left um, with the calculator screen, the graph, and we've also got the documents to the right. And you'll see the icons down the bottom we go across from the calculator to the graphs, to the geometry, this and spreadsheets, data and stats, data quests, etc. through here, the notes application, so it's all through there. So as with the students, we say to them, and teachers who are new to the Inspire as well, we say, all right, the home screen, we'll see what's there. We want a new document. Now, it depends if they've had a file open already, so all we've got to do is press 1. You'll notice when we use the software and the calculator icon here, we've got the keypad. I'm just going to press 1. It might come up, do you want to save your previous document? You'll just use across and say no. But generally it comes up with the screen here. You can see the applications that we can add. So I'm going to add a calculate application just by pressing 1. And you'll see on the screen here we've just got the calculator and we will actually see that, all right, so we've got the calculator, we've got the document. What settings do we have? And look us through the things like that. The most important keypad to press now is press the menu. And you'll see within the calculator application, we have all these sub-menus. And you'll see we have the number, the algebra, the calculus. Remember in Queensland, it's the non-CADs uh, with the external assessment. Some schools probably choose to do CADs. And the CX2, the beauty of it, you can actually have turn the CADs off. So if I select, say, the algebra menu, and I'm a simple bloke and I look at it, instead of using the arrows down to actually press enter, I select three. And we have another menu here which says numerical solve, and look at the sub-menu. You think, okay, I want to solve simultaneous equation, I would select two. But to get out of the sub-menu, you want to escape from it, so obviously press the escape keypad. Back to here, and then we press escape again. So within the calculate application, we have the menu items. So we talk about navigation. How do we insert a new application? So I'll teach you a few ways. Some people like to press home again, and what they could do, they could tab through. Look what happens when I press the tab. I'm going through, and we come to the calculator. We can add another calculator application. If we tab again, we can add a graphs application. So let's do that. So we can actually add a calculation, and we press enter. We've got the graphs application. 
and we have the entry line. So let's just press Escape from there so we don't want the entry line. Now let's press the menu keypad and you'll notice because it's a new application, the Graphs application, we'll have a new menu. And you'll see that if we want to change anything or look for anything, we just select the right window. So if we want to change the window, obviously, I often talk to the students and say, where do you think the change the window is going to be? And they say, select 4. So I'll press 4 and we can change settings and go through a few settings. Like before, we can press Escape to get out of it, Escape to get out of it again. So in here, and you look at the notation, we have problem 1, we have two pages, two applications open. So another way of actually inserting a document is some people like to add a page. So they go Control. Now with this here, not like a computer, hold the Control key down, you press it, take it off, and then press the actual document. As you see, it's in blue, you have to use the Control key first. Up comes, what do you want to add? So let's add a list and spreadsheet. It's not just a table, it's very powerful, many, many features of a list and spreadsheet. So you see there we've got three applications open. So how do I move from 1.3 back to 1.2 back to 1.1? Obviously with this nav pad, I can use the cursor and go across to the top and click on it. But a simple way of navigating on the handheld is, can you see the left arrow key, little blue left arrow here? So if I'm in 1.3 at the moment, I can go control, left arrow, I'm back to 1.2. Obviously I can keep on going back 1.1, and obviously to go to the right, I can just go control, right, control, right, control, right. There's other ways of doing it. I often always tell my students, you have a computer in your hand. Control I, control V, control X, control C, all works. So if I want to insert a new application with my students, I go control and press I. Ready to go. What do you want to insert? Let's insert a geometry page or an application. So I just press 3 and we actually have an application. Can you see at the moment we've got 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 is off the page through here. Let's have a look and we keep on going and there we have the geometry application. So let's pretend we're back to starting the calculator and we have some calculations. So you notice I was using the, with the software to click it like the hand I can click it up there. So if I want to do 8 multiplied by 9 and press enter. And Melissa will do this later on with the software, but you can save it to your hard drive. We've got a new document here that's actually got some calculations. And suppose I don't want that anymore. And if I want to actually have a new document, so what you could do, we could actually go into and add a new document. But for the moment, it's all about navigation. And we've got, as I said, a short amount of time. So we look through the menus look through the applications. So what we can do, we can so press Home. Let's select one for new documents. So let's press one. Do you want to save your unsaved documents? This is where the students have opened the calculator for the first time, they've played around with it and set, done a few things. So obviously we can either press Tab or just use our right arrow key to go across to No and then press Enter. What do you want to add? So we can say, let's add another calculator application and we can look at that one through there. So with the inserting, I often do control I to add a new application. Now, we look through the menus. So what's the settings? So with the settings, we can look at how your calculator is set up. So press Home, and we have the settings menu. So this is with the handheld. So with the software, it's a standalone device as well. So press 5 for settings. And we can go down to document settings. And you can look at the things about with the software and saving things as well. So if I go into two, so I can use press number two, or I can just click into it. As you can see here, your digits, when you actually update your operating system and have a look at things like that, it goes to float six generally. So with my students, I often say, we want to see more than six significant figures. So I set it to float 12. And obviously we can change the angle, and look at all the calculation format, but just for the moment, the introduction, we keep it at this here and we select OK. And you're sitting here and go, how do I get to my current document? Well, on the screen it says the current document. So I just press, oh, I'm ready to go with that there. So every time I open up a new document, we'll have those settings saved for us and we can look at that as well. So now, 
a few things that are very, very important with the actual setup. There's a lot of shortcut keys. As we go through shortcuts and look through things, we do integration. If I want to do integration, for example, I'm in the calculator. If I press menu, where would it be under? That's why I ask the students, I say, oh, calculus. Select four, and they're the selection you can have in the non-CAD system. So we can actually select number two, and you see the template? It's ready to go. So we can actually evaluate with bounds and say one to four of x squared dx. So what I could do is actually just go one. I need to go up to the other band. You can either press tab or press the up arrow key of your nav pad. Go to the four. And obviously, if I have x squared, x and squared, you can use the exponent keypad, tab across to x with respect to x, and then press enter. We have our calculations. Quick little teaser for you to actually do with the integration. Obviously, with integration, we add one of the exponent divided by the new exponent, or just with the general x terms. Shortcut is shift plus. If I don't like what's there, I can use the backspace, which is a delete pad. So I can actually delete what we've got there. Or if you want to do the whole line, control, clear, do the whole line. Okay, so there's many, many shortcuts and we get used to it. Now, with this one here, we've got the calculator. A very, very important keypad that I refer to a great deal is the catalog. People often call it the book, but it's called the catalog. If I press the catalog, up comes the submenus. Menu number one lists every command on the calculator from A through to Z. As you go across the top of the screen, you can see that two, we've actually got them in categories. Three, we've got the units, and we've got the symbols palette. So if I come across the four, we have the symbols palette. If you see that symbol there, look here on the actual keyboard, you've actually got the symbols palette in here as well. So if I click into here, we have all the symbols palette. But the most important one that I look at is obviously other than number one, is look at number five. So we have our templates. The best thing about this particular menu, if I arrow across, you'll see that with the actual templates, down the bottom it tells you what's actually doing that. So it's pretty straightforward with square root. If we come across to here, you'll see we have two-piece piecewise function. You will see that we can have derivatives. Okay, now if I escape out of that, like most things are the same before we get out of a situation, just press escape. If you look at the symbols palette here or the templates through there in the symbols palette, if I click into here and press this one, have you noticed that this, the same palette appears except there's no description of what it is? So it's just a cut down version of the templates. So you can actually access it through there as well. So if I escape out of that, and go back to the catalog, select one or press one, select it. Now, obviously, if I press T, it'll go to the first command that goes with the T. If I come up through the top, you'll see all the different commands and down the bottom, can you see there, I've got the standard deviation of a sample. It tells you that we have a list and that's required, which is in the list and spreadsheet column, and that's extra if you require, it's not required, what's in a square bracket. Now, with the actual numerical solve, on this calculator, it's actually numerical solve. So I'm just using with the calculator exponent, I'm going to press N. I could press O and come back. So if I keep coming down, we get to here, we're nearly there, numerical solve. What do we need to solve an equation? So numerical solve, we need an equation with the comma with the variable. So with this here, with the templates and the instructions, if I just press enter, just remember what it was, the equation and the variable, I need to solve that equation. So I'm going to solve, for example, 2p plus 3 and equals 11. And remember the syntax, we needed a comma, which was down here. And then we press x and press enter. And you look at this here and you say to yourself, okay, now we're very able to find the variable. Let's have a look. So we press escape. What did we do wrong here? Can you see what's happened through there? So 
can you see that we've had to solve 2p plus 3 is 11 comment oh we put x by mistake so we don't want to type that again so what we're going to do is we go up to there and a quick way to copy that down is press so obviously we had to solve with respect to p i'll do that how is this going to go and let's have a look and we have it there so the simple things it's easy you think you've got it right but simple things like that so i wanted to show you with looking through that so if I wanted to go in the calculator and actually look at the menu commands, press menu, obviously solve is in algebra. Let's select three. Numerical solve, press one. Then you see what you've got there, you've actually got the syntax. Now, once you've got rid of that, here's another little, little trick towards the end of my first part of the session. A wonderful thing on the calculator is the control menu, which is the right click, which is the contextual menu. So on the handheld, control menu will be the right click. So with the software, it's easy to use. So let's, for example, if I type in the equation first, 2p plus 3, and you say to yourself, there's no equation there yet, and I put it equals 3. And I might change that to say 30. If I go control menu, have a look at the command that says there's a math actions. So let's just press one. What do you want to do? Solve numerically, just follow instruction, press enter, and look what happens. Solve for P, we can put in a guess, we have a bounds, and that's the type of thing we can look at. Just for the moment, I'm just going to say, yep, I'm happy. Can you see what's happened now? Let's put the instructions in there for you. So this is a lovely shortcut. So you've got the answer there, but have a look now when I press control menu. Because there's no equation put in, it doesn't have that actual icon where the actual answer uh, instruction is. So just be careful with that situation. There's lots to see with the button there. So with that particular section, we actually look at the numerical solve or the commands and it's easy to navigate. So with that, I think that my time is up there, John, because Melissa's got lots to cover regarding with the software and the handheld. So I was trying to actually look at all the commands within that as well. As I said, I prefer opening up a new application control eye. And one thing whilst in the software, which we all do things differently, under the help command, when students install their software, and we say about TI Inspire. So Students get an activation card and they actually get a number. What I do at school is actually I get the students to actually copy that number and email it to me and I keep it as a spreadsheet. I rarely have to use it, but it's always a backup. But we all do things differently, but we have the software. So on that uh, note, so I'll pass the baton over to um, Melissa. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Rodney. And like I said, it's great what you've already shared and it's amazing. There is so much that we can actually uh, learn. So um, it really is the tip of the iceberg. So uh, thank you for doing that. And um, I'm just um, actually needing to share my screen so I can actually introduce Melissa without doing that. Then um, we're not going to actually see, we'll hear her lovely voice, but actually not actually get to see her. So um, here we go. So uh, Melissa, um, hopefully you are there and um, we're looking forward to learning some stuff from you as well. So uh, thank you for joining us. And Melissa certainly walks the talk when it comes to using TI technology, um, having followed the development from using the TI-82 through to today's uh, TI-84CE and also now the TI-Inspire CX-2. Um, as I mentioned already, there are very few differences at the moment between that and the CX, but uh, everything that Rodney and Melissa are showing tonight can be done on both. And she also does a lot of stuff with the Navigator system. If you don't know much about that, please check out the website. And this gives her a really deep knowledge of the use of this technology and her first-hand experiences when she's applying this in the classroom to maximize her students' learning. So, Melissa, thanks for joining us, and hopefully um, you'll do a better job of sharing your screen than I just did then. <laughs> Let's hope so. Okay, I should be able to share now. Oh, and I even, oh, I just mucked up. I even went to where I wanted to be. Um, so, I'm looking, as Rodney and John both said, I am looking at the software. So the first thing I look at and the very first thing I tell my students um, is when they purchase the TI Inspire, 
whether it's CX or CX2, which is what you're purchasing now, and whether it's CAS or non-CAS, I know our focus tonight is non-CAS, um, you get the software for free with the calculator. And it's more than an emulator. So with the old um, a TI, the old TI-84, the newer TI-84 is better software now, but um, you only had an emulator, which meant from a teaching point of view, I had a demo version. With the calculators, with the Inspire, you get um, the software and it works just like the handheld. So the first thing is, and I've been doing this for a number of years, as you saw in my information there, the biggest issue I have that, um, when students get their software, and I had it happen again this year, is students are very good at opening up the packaging, pulling out the calculator, and throwing everything else away. Now, I've been teaching for a number of years. I always say to students when they say, my calculator's not working, even if it's not a TI Inspire, not a graphics calculator, it's a scientific calculator. First thing I say is, have you got your manual? Well, no. But where do you think you're going to get help? It's with a manual. Well, with the TI Inspire and with most things now, the manual comes more detailed digitally, but you have to get the software, you have to install the software. So I went through this rant only a couple of weeks ago with my Year 11 methods class, reminding them they needed to do it. I've already had a couple of students that informed me that they opened their calculator, they threw everything away, they didn't have their activation codes. So that's a big thing for me because once you throw it away, it is difficult to get the activation. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. You can't buy the software separately, okay? It will tell you, and I'll show you where to find that activation information shortly, but it actually tells you on the document where to find the software. So you find the software, you can see on my screen at the moment, you go to the TI website. So I'm just opening up the TI website now. I'm hoping my internet's not too slow because we have just had a bit of storm, although it was a bit of a fizz up go through. I've opened up the TI, software, uh, TI website, Texas Instruments website. Now you will notice here if you go to the right hand side of the screen, it says site US and Canada. For the software that is not an issue. If you want help and you want things that are related to what we're doing here in Australia, you do need to change that site by clicking on it, go to the Asia Pacific region and choose Australia. To get the software, that is not necessary because the software is the same. Okay? You go into download and you go to software is one method. The other method to get your software is if you have a look at TI Inspire technology, and learn more, and you are able to see there with the TI Inspire software, the link's down the bottom, and we've got TI Inspire CX student software. Notice there are two different versions, okay? If you have got non-CAS here in Queensland, we use non-CAS, um, and that's what you'll be using for your external exams. You are not allowed to use a CAS calculator for an external exam. You can use CAS calculator in your classrooms for your assignments and that sort of thing. You will need to click on CX. If you've got a CAS calculator, you do need to click on CX CAS. Once you go in there, it gives you some information, but what's really important, and I'm going to come back to this um, in just a little bit, showing you how to do it, but it is telling you what's new. Here's the latest version of the software. So the latest version of the software is 5.1, but it depends if you're using CX2 or you're using CX. We'll look at that in a moment. You can download straight away, and even if you've thrown away your activation information, the free trial, but this will only give you 30 days on your computer. Okay, what you then do is go to the what's new, and it asks you to go through some 
um, information. Okay, you can upgrade now. Looking at that, there is various versions of it. Okay, but it gives you information and you upgrade. It is going to ask you what calculator you actually have. Notice there's a difference. The first two calculators here on the screen are CX2 and CX2 CAS. They are the most recent ones that are being sold. If you have a slightly older version of the TI Inspire, then you have the CX and the CX CAS. It's just slightly different in terms of your operating systems, what they go up to, where their numbering starts. Click on what you've got. Click on that you want the student software. That's what you're going to use. Most students won't have the Innovator Hub, so you would click No, and it's going to then take you to the link to download. And it's there in front of you, t by CX Graphing Calculator. Now notice that's the calculator operating system and then the software can be downloaded to Windows, can be downloaded to Apple. You choose, obviously, if you've got a MacBook, you're downloading the Apple version. Otherwise, you're downloading the Windows version. That is going to start the download. Now, I'm going to stop that because I've already downloaded it. All right, so that's where you get the software from. Next thing, how do you install it? This is the sheet of card that is inside the box, the packaging, when you open your calculator. It says in the yellow up the top, do not discard. That means do not throw it away. You need it. When you open it out, you'll see the background part here. And on the inside cover, it has your license number. That is the information that you require to activate your software. Otherwise, trial version only lasts 30 days. You enter that in. In terms of activation, when you open up the software, it is going to ask you, and I'm going to show you this, I'm going to actually close down my software, move out of everything. I've installed my software. Here's my icon sitting on my desktop. Okay, it is a square one. Ignore the circular ones down the bottom here. They're the teacher ones. Okay, the student software, when I open it up, after I've done the install, and obviously you follow the wizard to do the install, it has, I haven't activated my software yet. I use the teach software, as I said, I've got the student software. You can see I installed it two days ago. I've got 28 days left. You will go to yes, activate your license. I'm going to continue in the trial version. But if you go yes, activate, it wants the license number in here. It's the same as all other software. It steps you through the process. You need to read the instructions on the screen. You need to follow those instructions on the screen. All right, let's get into the actual software because otherwise I am going to run out of time. So opening up my software. You've actually seen the software tonight because Rodney was using it for the demo. Let's have a look, first of all, at the software at the, the screen structure. So on the left-hand side, as you can see here, is the keyboard, the keypad, exactly the same as the handheld. So I have this keypad on the left-hand side. My screen is here on the right-hand side. That's my workspace. That's what you'd see on your screen if you're using your handheld. At the top here, we have our normal menus, okay, so your file, edit, view, etc. Underneath that, the ribbon, so exactly the same structure as um, Microsoft Windows, all those programs use, nothing too um, different there. A few important things. If you want to start a new document, the nice part about using the software is you can have multiple documents open at once. On the handheld, only one document, which is why when you go to go open a new document, it will ask, do you want to save the old one? If I want to start a new document, new documents on the left-hand side here, I'm going to choose. Now, notice it gives you handheld page and computer page. 
If I go, handheld is what you can see in front of you now. If I go computer page size, it's slightly different. It doesn't look like the calculator screen. It's more of a document as such. What I can also go is to a publish view document. I don't use this one very much. I actually tend to use handheld. Again, as a teacher, I am demonstrating, so I want my screen here to look the same as the students in my class. But notice across the bottom here, under my workspace, I've got four documents operating at the moment, all in different modes as well, which you can do. If I've already got a document on my computer, I can open it up. So I can go in and have a look at something that has been saved. As long as it has this .tnf, it will open up in my software. Moving down to the toolbox, so this area on the left hand side here where my keypad is, that is my toolbox. At the moment I've got the middle icon chosen which is the keypad so that I've got my calculator keypad with my screen. On the left here I can actually have, I've got it set at light so it looks exactly the same as my TI Inspire CX2 that I'm using the handheld, I can set it as dark, I can set it as just an outline. I prefer to leave mine as the light. It gives me then the blue control, everything's the way it looks on my handheld. On the very le uh, left of my documents toolbox, I can actually insert an application. So at the moment I haven't got an original application in there, so it's telling me to press menu. If I choose menu and put in a calculator page, and obviously really easy on the software because I'm using my mouse. I'm not having to use my keypad on the left here. I can use my numerical keypad on my keyboard. Also the software, uh, software is really easy for the alphabet keys down the bottom because I'm using my QWERTY keyboard of my computer, not having to learn my alphabet this way. Now that I've got that in there, notice it's my menu structure. So just like hitting menu on my handheld, I can I get all of my menu structure here and it just makes it easier, it's not on my actual screen area. Beside that, you can see all the pages you've got open. Notice here it's got problem one. Now Rodney showed you that if you add a page, it goes 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, etc. across. Anything that you do in those pages that all start with a one, if I have a variable X, it has the same value on all pages. If I have it a variable A or the variable P that Rodney was working with before, it has the same value on every page that starts with a number one. If I want to do another question, I don't want to lose what I've done, but I want the variables to have a different value, I need to insert a new problem. So not just insert a new page, but insert a new problem. Now, I'm going to go up to insert because I don't have my keypad available. I'm going to choose insert problem. Notice on the left here I've got problem two. I'll put a graph page in there. Notice my pages now start with a 2.1. I've started a new problem. It's like starting a new question in my exercise for homework or a new question in my test. Now I can use P again and it's got nothing to do with what was in problem one. And I can see all my pages here. Back to my documents toolbox. I have the calculator keypad there that we've seen. I have here my template. So this is my, um, all of my utilities. So there's my templates. Rodney showed you how to get the templates on the um, keypad, on the handheld. I have my symbols, which most of those are found in the question mark key on the handheld next to the letter G. I have my catalog here. I have my math operators here. I can do unit conversions and I've got my libraries here. Okay, so I tend to be with math templates is what I'm using. So you're doing PS, if you're in year 12, you're probably doing a PSMT, you may have done your PSMT. If you're in year 11, unit one, you might be just about to start your PSMT. So 
So you're going to be using the software to be able to do some work to put into your PSMT report. So using this makes it easy. You can do your homework, you can do your work on this. I'll show you in a moment how to transfer to the um, handheld. I do have to watch the time. I know that I'm running out. Um, and the last thing here, and this one is to show you how to do those transfers, is my files. And notice there, it gives me, when I click on my files folder, the computer. So looking in my desktop, I can go looking for anything that I've got there that is a TI-inspired document, okay? I do have software there, but remember, it's got to have a .tns, so I didn't actually have one sitting there. Okay, there's my desktop, though. I can go and find, I could put a file on my desktop and go and look there. Down the bottom is TI-inspired CX connected handhelds, and you can reduce that. It's gone now. I can show that. I don't have anything showing up there at the moment. However, I have my trusty handheld here. I am connecting it to my computer. Let's hope this actually works. As soon as I've connected, now that cable comes with your TI Inspire. It's in the packaging. You would have got um, a USB to calculator, to mini USB, and possibly the shorter one, which is calculator to calculator. Notice as soon as I've connected it, it has recognized my calculator. It's got the entire piece of information there in terms of the calculator's number, et cetera, so it's individual ID number. In the connected handhelds, there's only one there. If I double click on that, it goes into the uh, files of the actual handheld. So these are files on the handheld. They're not on my computer. And I can open up, if I go to example, go to getting started, it's taken a document from my handheld. There's a message on my handheld screen, document sent, and it gives the name of it and it has OK. That's on my handheld screen. And here's the document here in front of me for me to use. So anything that is on your handheld, any work you do in class at school, you can open up onto your software at home. You can save it to your computer. On the topic of saving, if you are going to do an operating system upgrade, it is going to clear a lot of your documents, etc. You need to save your work. So if I wanted to save that getting started onto my computer, I've got the document open. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and say where do I want to save it. So if I want to save it to my desktop and hit save, what we'll see in just a moment is when I now go to up the top, and I can't see it there at the moment, what should be on my desktop is that, that getting started file doesn't seem to be there right now, so it's let me down. But I could access it and open it from there as well. To transfer a file from your computer down to your handheld, the easiest way is, as I've said, have it on your desktop. You're then going to select it. Now, I don't have one sitting on my desktop. I'm sorry, I have a new computer, so there's lots of things missing from it. Say I wanted to use this one. Uh, there you go. I'm opening a Word document here. We'll just close that off. Okay, you would click on it, and this is what I should have done. You would right click, and it will give you the option, if it's a TI Inspire, so .tns, to transfer to your handheld. And you can then do that transfer. A um, couple of other things. Rodney showed us menus. In terms of on the software, as I said, your menus, I did pick the one that had nothing in it. Your menus are in your documents toolbox. Your menus are also here, just above the workspace. And you've got all your options. Everything's there available to you. So the menus are easy enough to find. I had a different page. 
This one's a graphing page, notice that changed straight away. The templates are there. A couple of other things, two more things before John is going to start giving me the wind up uh, music. You need Never. to use this. <laughs> you need to use this for your PSMT. You've drawn a graph of x squared. Whoops, would help if I actually put squared in. Okay, I've drawn my graph. I need that for my assignment, my PSMT. So I need a copy of that. Up the top here is a camera. Notice as I go across it, it says take a screen capture. If I use the drop down, I can capture the page, I can capture the selected handheld. Because my handheld is still attached, I'll show you that my handheld on the right hand side down the bottom, quick message, screen capture taken, click on view it. There's the message I got when I opened the document, sorry, sent the document from my handheld to my computer. So that's the message you get to say document sent. If I want to capture my graph, which is what I actually need in my assignment, capture page, message comes up. Good part is I've got my Word document open. I'm typing my PSMT. I need to insert. All I have to do there is control V. Because I've captured it, it's the latest thing that has been copied. So I don't have to go in, I can because I get the menu here. I can go in and copy. All of these images stay here for the moment until I close my software and then it will ask me, do I want to save them anyway? So I can save my images. I can copy my images. If it's not the right one, I can get rid of my image. Okay, I can enlarge them. I can work with all of that. That's in my screen capture. Going back into my software, um, the last thing that I want to do before I do have to finish is to show you how to do an operating system check and upgrade. So Rodney showed you in the help menu before that you can go into the about software. Okay, notice mine says 28 day trial expires. Rodney's one he showed you gave the actual activation code. Save that activation code, I forgot to say before, when you have got when you have got this document open, you're typing in your activation code, take a photo of that, save it on your computer, save it on your phone, all that sort of thing, so you've got multiple copies of it. Okay. Um, but you've got it on the software as well. Notice it tells me the version number there. I can go to check for operating system updates. And this takes me, it tells me in this case, there is a newer version. Okay, so I'm currently running 5.0.0. So I click continue and it says you're about to upgrade. Now notice that's upgrading my handheld. That's because my handheld attached here is not the most recent operating system. I'm not going to go through that because it will take time. But just to show you again, help. Notice my software was 5.1. Your software and your calculator are not necessarily the same operating system. So help check for operating system update. And it will take you to the website to get the update. Download it to your computer. Have your handheld connected. So drop it on the desktop. And then you will have the option when you are in your files to get it from the desktop and to install it. Um, I think that was mainly everything. Again, we've got all of the inserts up the top there. Um, the document preview, if you are doing it as a document. Um, I think that's pretty much it. That is fantastic. So, and um, I'm some, going uh, to jump back to John. So let me just thank, stop sharing and much. hand back to John. That's okay. You are well, yeah, thank you for that, Melissa. And there's been some lovely feedback from uh, from the people who've been watching, for both yourself and to uh, Rodney. So thank you for that. And in 45 minutes, an impressive effort. So thank you very much indeed. You are welcome. I need a drink now for all that talking. <laughs> oh, 
water, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. All right, so as we begin wrapping things up, um, if you do have any last-minute questions, please try and get those asked through the chat windows. I know Melissa and Rodney will endeavor to answer them. Um, or equally, we can add them to future planning of, of other webinars that we'll be running, both for teachers and for students. Uh, your certificate of attendance will be emailed to you in the next 48 hours, uh, along to a link for our on-demand and YouTube version of the recordings. And the, like I said, there's lots more on that YouTube channel that you can check out. And Hot Off The Press is a new student blog uh, that's available for you to uh, not only visit but also register on. And each of the, as you can see from that screenshot, for each of the states as well, um, Melissa and Rodney both work in Queensland, um, myself, uh, Northern Territory, that's linked to South Australia. So uh, thank uh, Melissa and Rodney. Thank you very much indeed for everything you've shared tonight. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I know that from the feedback our viewers have as well. So thank you very much. Most welcome. welcome. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We run these for you guys to make it um, as rewarding for you to use our technology as possible. If you do have any questions, please contact TI, and I know they'll endeavor to answer them. Uh, but on that note, thank you very much, and have a good night.